Okay, let's talk about my Bible study routine and how seminary has completely transformed my Bible study life. Let's begin. So if you guys are new here, my name is Faith, I'm a pastor's wife, and I recently finished seminary about four to five months ago. I had gone to undergrad Bible college and gotten a degree in biblical and theological studies and really enjoyed it, ate it up. And to be honest, a lot of people said, you don't need to go to seminary. Like, why would you go to seminary? You already got an undergrad degree. There's no usefulness as a female with a Bible degree in your denominations. And yet I always wanted to go to seminary. I remember sitting on the side of a pool in high school, talking to my best friends and telling them like I really wanted to go to seminary and saying that out loud was just such like an act of bravery for me because I thought it was impossible. Impossible. And yet by the Lord's grace, like I was able to go to seminary even as a mom of two toddlers and make it work and learn so much. It is not an overstatement to say that it changed my life. But honestly, when seminary ended, like I was exhausted. I needed a couple months to kind of sleep in. <laughs> if you guys don't know, I was getting up at 4 a.m. all throughout seminary. So I went through seminary in two years because of my undergrad degree. There was like credits that transferred and just the way that things worked out. Two years was what worked for me. Although I do not recommend that for everybody, especially credit wise, it just changes with degree programs and things like that. But I did it in two years. And so I woke up at 4 a.m. and would do the majority of my classwork before my family was up and I had to start doing things. And then during nap times, I would work on it. And then late into the evenings, I'd work on it or edit for YouTube. And so I was, What's the word I'm trying to think of? I was working hard for years on end. And when I think back to that guys, like if I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I get tired just remembering it. It stresses me out. <laughs> I got like re more wrinkles through those two years. Like I uh, feel like I did physical damage to my body. I'm glad it's over. It was almost like, I don't know, a lot of careers have like an intense couple of years. And I feel like that was mine, but hopefully I don't have that again. <laughs> anyway, the point of the story is, since I finished seminary, I've needed a couple months to rest. And just within the last couple weeks, I've begun feeling strong, healthy again, like healthy faith in like a perfect world. Sews and sings and reads and, and does a lot of things that are a reflection of a healthy, well-rested life and lifestyle. And I've been picking those things back up now that I have a little bit more balance in my life. If y'all don't know, I moved into a studio a couple months ago, right around the time when I finished seminary. So I guess it was four months ago now. That has helped me kind of separate work, like YouTube from my private life. And that way I'm not thinking about how to edit a video or what email I need to send out when I'm doing the dishes or when I'm trying to read my kids a book. Where am I going with this? I have been in a season of rest. <laughs> trying to rest and catch back up. And yet within the last couple of weeks, I've been sensing this desire to start waking up a little bit earlier. And I've been getting up early and starting my Bible study time, which is kind of weird to say because my whole life is basically like nonstop Bible studies other than like house chores, it's nonstop Bible studies. But like starting my Bible study day with reading whatever Christian living book I'm reading. Y'all know I've been really enjoying getting to choose what I wanna read now that I'm not in seminary. I've been having a lot of fun with that. And so these last couple of weeks, I've been getting up a little bit earlier and reading, doing a little bit of prayer journaling, prayer singing to the Lord, just trying to get my heart and my mind ready before my boys come running out of their bedroom and the day starts and I need to pack lunches and get them going. So my Bible study routine or like the way that I start my Bible studies off now that I'm out of seminary actually starts not with the Bible, which sounds a little weird, but you have to understand that like my job is Bible study. And so I'm reading Christian living books to kind of get my brain awake, get started. And because it's me time, like to get ready before the boys and a little bit of prayer drilling as well. And then when I come to my studio here after I drop my boys off at school is where I kind of pick back up with that Bible study and actually pull out my Bible. Because I leave my Bible here with all of my resources, I cannot figure out a way to Bible study away from all the commentaries and the Bible dictionaries and everything like that, which I thought was gonna be a lot more irritating than it is. But honestly, I don't know how to explain this. When all of my resources were at my house, like my bookshelves and everything, it felt like I could always be doing more research for whatever Bible study I was doing. It felt like there was a never 
never-ending hamster wheel that I was running on. There was always more chapters I could read. There was always more research I could do. The job was never done. Because in theory, yes, you can always read another commentary on whatever chapter of the Bible. You can always read somebody else's angle or take or exegesis, whatever. Like there's always more you can do. And so honestly, like keeping my Bible here most of the time and like all of my Bible resources and leaving like this quiet, uninterrupted space as my Bible study area has been really good. It keeps me, this is once again, gonna sound really weird, but it keeps me from spending too long in my Bible study, which is totally like a Bible nerd thing. You guys get it. But because I'm here and like, this is like my time to get stuff done. I eventually have to cut myself off after an hour or so, depending on the day and my tasks. Like I eventually have to say, okay, it's time to go send that email or it's time to go check in on my editor. Or, it's time to go make that call or whatever. While that is like my top priority when I walk into my studio, y'all know it's like absolute hands down, no question about it, the most important part of my day. I do have to eventually cut myself off and say, okay, like you've gone deep enough. Like let's, let's move on with your day. From there, then I actually get into work. I've already done kind of my casual reading. I've done my praying. I'll do my Bible study. I'll review my verses that I'm memorizing and then I'll get into my day of work. But within my actual Bible study, like when I've cracked open my Bible and I look at my Bible reading plan for the day, if you guys don't know, I'm going through a Bible reading plan. I wrote it <laughs> and it's got 95 grace days. So out of the 365 days in a year, you could in theory take 95 grace days off, just not read your Bible at all or read something else in your Bible and still complete reading the Bible through in a year. Because if you're anything like me, you get sick and you don't feel like reading your Bible or you go on vacation and you don't wanna bring your Bible and all its resources or whatever. This is the Bible reading plan for those of us who need some grace. And if you wanna join me, a lot of people say that they wanna wait into the new year, but I always say like, there's no better time to start reading your Bible than today, you're not promised tomorrow. And maybe I have this point of view because I lost my sister when she was around my age now, but I just really am a firm believer. Like, I don't wanna encourage you to guys to like put it off. Like start today and just read the Bible through in a year, every September to September or every October to October. Like there's no rules that say that you have to wait until the new year. If anything, that's totally a man-made thing. So anyway, all that to say, I read through the Bible and every single day I have just already pre-chosen for me what I'm going to read for that day. And it's chronological and thematic. I wrote it so that when you're reading through the passage in Kings, it would also go along with like the passage in Chronicles or the Psalm that goes along with it. But then also it's thematic. And so there's some tips and points and questions that I've written for myself and for the user to be able to kind of get a general idea from the passage. But when I'm reading through my actual passage and when I'm doing my actual Bible study, I've noticed that I kind of naturally do an inductive Bible study. If you guys don't know, inductive Bible studies are kind of like three steps. You observe what's in the text, like the who's, the what's, the when's, the how's, all the things. Then you interpret that and then apply it. And I've noticed how seminary kind of made that like a part of how I breathe in the Bible. When I crack open my Bible, I'm breathing an inductive Bible study. It's hard for me to break apart from that. So if you're wanting to like get the results of getting a seminary education, just do an inductive Bible study like every single day in your Bible studies until it becomes part of like your natural brain processes when you approach the scriptures. And then I also would say since graduating seminary, I have really, really, really been humbled when it comes to Bible dictionaries. So before I started seminary, I thought I understood what like just was or predestination or like I'm trying to think of big words that are overused but a lot of people don't know the definition of like I thought I knew a definition but I didn't know the richness of the definitions and so I don't know if you guys have noticed in my content but I've really started pushing Bible dictionaries because I would be like writing a paper or listening to a lecture or whatever and using words and being like wait am I using this the right way and I'd turn to a Bible dictionary and be like wow my mind is blown on just how rich that word is and so I've also noticed in my Bible studies I've been using the the Bible dictionary a lot more. And I've shared this before on my channel, but whenever you come across the name of a person, the name of a town, really any kind of big theological word that you don't understand, just stop. If you're gonna do nothing else in your Bible study, just stop and look it up in your Bible dictionary. Your Bible dictionary may or may not have it in there, but when it does, it will blow your mind, the information that it has in there, the connections it makes to the other parts of the Bible and just make your Bible so much more rich. It's almost like commentary for any passage of the Bible. Like it's such a great, rich tool, but also that, brings me to my next point is I've also noticed I've been using cross references a lot more since I graduated seminary. Some things that my seminary professors did in their lectures, which they didn't honestly like super teach us how to do, but I noticed that they just did it all the time is kind of like what Andrew Wilson did in the book that I recently reviewed in my podcast, God of All Things. Andrew Wilson made the connection of like honey from like Genesis 1-1 all the way to Revelation 22. And our seminary professors would do that all the time in seminary. Like, oh, well, you know, this king was also like, his name means this, which points 
to the overall message of the book here and points to Revelation here or the cross here. And they would make that Old Testament to the New Testament. I mean, like every part of the literature connection and metaphor and connect it all. I've really noticed I miss that and I yearn for more of that and trying to do that more in my own Bible studies. And so looking at those cross references, where else have those words been used? What is this verse? Like maybe if I'm in the New Testament and it's building on this idea or this metaphor, where else has that metaphor or that idea been used in the Old Testament? Like I've been looking for those connections because they're just so rich and it just takes time. It's not really something that my professors could have taught me. It's just being in the word, really studying those metaphors, really studying the rich messages there and putting yourself in that first century world where you start to identify with that first century way of thinking whenever you're in the text and you're able to make those connections. Oh, they would have been thinking of Job here or oh, they would have been thinking about Ecclesiastes or whatever. So that's also something that muscle that I kind of grew, not because I went to seminary, but as a result of going to seminary that I'm just gonna continue growing for the rest of my life. And again, that's something that like anybody can do. You don't need to go spend a lot of money on a seminary education to go do that. And finally, since graduating seminary, I've noticed that my Bible studies, I've just been a bigger nerd. I've been a lot more charged to be academic. I want to memorize scripture because I saw just how powerful it was for the few <laughs> scriptures that I do have memorized when I was taking my classes or writing my papers. And I don't know how to word it better than that. It makes me geek out. Y'all know I'm currently taking Hebrew with Kairos to continue my education. If you guys wanna take Hebrew or Greek classes, I really encourage you to take it with them because it's not about the grades or the tests or the school credits for your degree or anything like that. It's just to learn it, to learn it. And I have really enjoyed Courtney and my whole experience with Kairos. So I will have them linked down below in the description box. But I've just noticed this nerdiness that I think is gonna stick with me long-term for the rest of my life. Just not for a credit, not for a degree, just wanting to learn. And so maybe you're watching this video because you're thinking about going to seminary. I would say, yes, go. Even if you're a girl in a denomination that doesn't ordain women, like go. Go. But also maybe you're watching this video because you wanna go deeper in your Bible studies and kind of see what a routine or a rich Bible study life would look like. And I would just simplify it by saying, use all the things and go deeper, like anywhere you can nerd out and rejoice in the nerdy funniness of it all. The fact that the Lord could refine me in such a way to delight in his word. I think of Psalm 118. It's not part of me that I would delight in God's word, his laws, his commandments. That's not part of my sinful nature, but it's him at work in my life. And for that, I will glory in it because it's not anything I've done, but it's him at work sanctifying me. And so just be encouraged. Like your desire to watch this video is from the Lord and your desire to want to learn more is from the Lord. So go get that Bible dictionary. So go take that class or whatever. Start slow, start with free resources online and then work up from there, whatever it looks like for you in your context and in your life. But I think really at the heart of why you may have clicked on this video is because you want that fire and that motivation to go deeper in your Bible study and some quick little tips or hacks to go deeper. And I'll tell you this, the best thing I can tell you is to just immerse yourself in it. Make it the most important part of your day. The breath by which you breathe, not physically, but like metaphorically. This is what I'm going to hold on to. I think of the nerdy kids in like the Disney movies when I was growing up. The nerdy kid always had glasses, freckles, and an inhaler and they go and they'd breathe in. <laughs> they start running and playing soccer or whatever the movie was about, you know, <laughs> with their little inhaler. And I laugh because I myself had asthma really bad. My kids now have it. My husband, had, you know, we're an asthma family and our kids will be those kids <laughs> on the soccer field. But the point is, is may that be the word in our life. You know, we're on our lunch break and we're <laughs> God's word, <laughs> or we're driving down the road and we're <laughs> God's word being sung on the radio, or you know, we're sitting at the dinner table and we're <laughs> meditating on God's word and talking about it with our family members and, and discussing theological debates or whatever it may look like. Like, may that be our <laughs> as if I needed to make that sound one more time. I'm just, I, I just had to do it one more time. Okay. <laughs> Guys, all in all, I think seminary, it was unlike my undergrad degree because I feel like in my undergrad degree, in some ways I felt like a poser. Like I was learning, but I didn't always delight in it. And seminary helped infuse in me that delight for what I was learning and not just learning to check boxes and rather like a lifelong lifestyle of how to learn. And I think it's because I did it while being a mom and while being, you know, normal work as a YouTuber and stuff. And so while, you know, many people told me to do seminary before I had kids, while many people would have said it was unwell 
wise for me to wake up early and do seminary. I think it's because I did it in the midst of life and I made the sacrifices to do it that it taught me how to live a nerdy life and just delight in God's word at the expense of my sleep. So I would encourage you, if you're feeling those nudges to go to seminary, to take classes, to nerd out, to geek out, to make that investment in the Bible dictionary or whatever it is, go and do it because that desire within you is not from you. Now, if you guys wanna see how I do inductive Bible studies, I actually did this whole little series right here while I was in the process of writing an inductive Bible study paper. It was like a paper doing a long inductive Bible study. So I encourage you to watch this. I'm a dork. It was filmed a while ago, so bad editing. I didn't have Leonardo back in the day. It's still really rich. And I think it will totally inspire you on how you can do an inductive Bible study. I'll see you guys in this video.